Hey everybody, I'm Ashton. I have a funny haircut today, and this is Desktop Inventions. So today, we're going to be doing a fun upgrade to the 3D printer to allow it to do time lapses. So to do that, I have some equipment back here on the table. I have a camera, a push button to activate the camera, a cord to connect those, a 3D printer, obviously, and then a tripod. You can't see that because you guys are on top of that. So we're just printing off a few parts here that we're going to use to connect all that together. And hopefully by the end of the day, we can get some beautiful time lapses going. So let's get to it. And first we're going to look at a way to mount this push button. It's shaped like a remote, so it's a lot of smooth curves, a little bit hard to measure. So we made a couple prototypes on how to mount this and they failed miserably. These were taking a while to print. So I printed some smaller pieces just to dial in the shape of this piece. See number four was kind of getting there. Then I finally got it figured out with the uh, fifth prototype here. So, so the remote is going to slide in and hold like that and then the button can be pushed from the front. Then there will be a cord coming at the bottom. So next we just got to get this mounted up to the printer and obviously I'll design the rest of this bracket to do that. Alright, we've got version 6 here. Let's see if this works then. Here's the bracket. Let's take a look at it. And here's the button. So this actually slides in here and fits very well. Very snug. It's very stable. And the idea was this bracket was going to bolt onto here. But we've got a problem here. This printer head is crashing into this bracket here and it needs to travel over more than that. So we'll have to fix that. So we'll take this bracket and cut across this line. All right, now I've got our line on here. Now all we need to do is cut this. And how will we cut this, you ask? Well, introducing hot knife, a razor blade tied to a soldering iron. So uh, this might fail miserably, but we're gonna try it. Hot knife is working slightly. I think we'll need a version 2 in the future. Anyways, for now, we'll just have to cut it the old-fashioned, messy way. There we go. That's more or less good enough. I think we can get this assembled and see, uh, see if there's any other problems. And there we go. Okay, so we still have some small problems. The BL Touch still cannot get all the way to the edge of the bed. Even after cutting that big chunk out, it's still interfering with the bracket. So to fix this, I will take and redesign this bracket. And here is version seven. Unfortunately, there's kind of a weak section here. So I was depaneling it, this thing broke in half, but we'll see later, that might be a happy accident. So now we'll assemble the top of that bracket with just the top bolts there. And now we'll get the old fan guard swapped out for the new one with the finger attachment. Pretty straightforward, just holding that in place with four screws. And now we'll test out the poking action with the finger. Seems to be right on target. So now that we've got the mechanics figured out, the next thing we'll have to do is dial in the location of the button. So to do that, we're going to want to home the X axis from our printer menu. Then after that, we're going to go to the move command and find the value where the finger is pressing the button. For me, it happens to be 241.5. I would recommend to take your time here, go little by little, so you don't take the risk of smashing into your button. Once you find the value that works for your printer, make sure to write that down and remember it, because we're going to need that value later. And now with Incura, we're going to modify the G-code to tell the finger to press the button. So at the top, you're going to go to Extensions, Post-Processing, and then Modify G-code. So once you're in that menu, click Add a Script, and then select Time Lapse. Now there's a few settings in here, such as the pause length you can change, but the most important one is Park X Head Value. So you're going to change that to the value you found earlier. 
So now once you slice this print, your printer head after each layer will go over and press the button at the coordinates you entered. You can always tell which scripts are enabled by the little red icon down by your slice button. Alright, here's the whole setup here. Have the light stand set up and the window closed just so we can keep consistent lighting over the length of the time lapse. Have the camera set up here on the tripod and the wire going over to the button there. So every time it finishes printing one layer, here we can see it's going over to press the button and take a photo. So there's 240 total layers, so there will be a total of 240 photos after this is all done that will compile into the time lapse. And now for the last step to get the software to put the time lapse together. I'm no expert in this area, but I searched around on the internet for some free software and I found a lot of garbage ones and a couple okay ones. If anyone has better suggestions for free to use software, please leave them in the comment below. And the first software is Make AVI, which is a super simple software to use, so we'll bring it up now. So on the home screen here, we're just going to click Add Files, and then we're going to select the photos that we want to add for the time lapse. Next you can see your photos in this simple list, and you can click down them just to make sure they're in the correct order. And next enter the speed at which you want your pictures to be shown. Then you can select begin and choose a file and folder location. At this screen you can select the type of video compression. Unfortunately none of these options worked for me. Then select OK and you're on your way. Now we can take a sneak preview at the finished time lapse. Wow. Now let's take a look at a second software option to make the time lapse. This is a very powerful free software with lots of capabilities. There's just one catch. It's all in Chinese. So the software is called Jian Ying, and I'll walk you through the process. So the first step is simple. Just click the plus icon and add your photos. Now once they're added in the top area here, we're just going to drag the mouse over and highlight all of the photos. And then we're going to drag them down to the video area. So these pictures come in at a 3 second length by default, and I don't know how to change that. So what we'll end up doing is a double export to get this down to time lapse length. So with all the photos added and in the correct order, we're going to hit the export button in the top right here. Then you can go ahead and select your settings and click the blue button to start the export process. And after a minute or two, your export process will be complete. After that, you'll want to press Ctrl N to start a new session. And again, press the blue button to confirm. Now with the new session, the first thing you'll do is click this plus icon again and open up your previously exported video. Again, take your video and drag it down to the bottom. Now it's very important to click so your play bar is in the middle of the video and then click on the video and then you can go over to the right and find the third icon. And then you can use this slider here to increase the playback speed. So we can see the length of this video drop from 19 minutes to just about 50 seconds. And you can hold the control and scroll on your mouse to zoom in on the video to make it larger. And we're going to increase the playback speed here to shorten the video to about 15 seconds. Now let's hit the full screen button and get a short preview of how it looks. So now with everything in order, let's go back to the main screen and export the video. I will export it at 1080p and 30 frames a second. And here we will select the folder and choose the name for the video file and just a few minutes to export the video and you're on your way. So now let's bring up both videos side by side and take a look. On the right is Make AVI and on the left is the Jian Ying. I think both videos look good and very comparable to each other. Now there's one big difference between these two software that we have to look at and that is the file size. You can see the Make AVI file size here is over 3 gigabytes while the Jianying file is just 24 megabytes, so that's a huge difference. Again, I couldn't get the video compression to work on the Make AVI software, but I guess that would make this smaller. If anyone has other ideas how to reduce the size of the Make AVI video, I'd be interested to hear in the comments below. And that's a wrap for the time lapse video, so let's uh, close the video by looking at a few more time lapses. I'll be honest, the quality of my time lapses are not great yet, so I will keep studying that and will surely improve in the future. And last but not least, here is our version 8 bracket to replace the broken one. This bracket is cut down in size and a lot faster to print. 
And I'll install this bracket to finish our time-lapse setup. And thank you everybody for watching Desktop Inventions on the journey to a thousand subscribers. We'll see you on the next video.